Dressed in full personal protective equipment gear and in handcuffs, political prisoner Reina May Nasino finally gets to say goodbye to her dead baby Wednesday, October 14, but only for three hours. She will be given another three hours on Friday, October 16, to attend her daughter River's burial. This comes after the Manila Regional Trial Court revised the furlough grant to Nasino. Instead of three full days, the court shortened it to only six hours, split for three hours each on October 14 and October 16 upon the request of the Manila City Jail Female Dormitory. Aside from the fear that the activist might bring COVID-19 back to her detention facility, the Manila City Jail also cites lack of manpower to guard Nasino for three days. Despite this, more than 20 jail guards and policemen escort Nasino as she visits the wake of Baby River. The infant died of pneumonia on October 9 at the Philippine General Hospital. Nasino was pregnant with River while she was in jail, but they were separated after delivery. Nasino is undergoing trial for the non-bailable charges of illegal possession of firearms and explosives. She was arrested in November 2019 along with more than 60 activists in a government crackdown against the left. The Commission on Elections grants the controversial Duterte Youth Organization a certificate of proclamation in the 2019 midterm elections. This comes despite several pending petitions challenging the validity of the group's registration and nominees. The Comelec An Bank voted 4-1 to one in favor of having the National Board of Canvassers issue a certificate of proclamation to Duterte Youth. Duchelle Cardema joined the House session Tuesday, October 13, the same day Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco was formally elected Speaker of the House, replacing Alan Peter Cayetano. Her name was also flashed on screen during the lower chamber's roll call. Commissioner Rowena Guanzon, the lone dissenter in the decision, says the Comelec should have first decided on the constitutional and threshold matters raised in petitions against Duterte Youth before it proclaimed a representative. Duchelle's husband, Ronald, was at the Celebrity Sports Plaza Monday, October 12, in a session that sought to install Velasco as House Speaker. Ronald Cardema had earlier sought the position for himself but was disqualified. Meantime, presidential son and Davao City representative Paulo Duterte is gifted with a plum post in the House just hours after his ally Lord Alan Velasco becomes Speaker. He is now the new chair of the House Committee on Accounts, the panel in charge of the internal budget of the chamber. Paulo Duterte replaces Cayetano ally and Cavite representative Bambol Tolentino in the committee. The move is not surprising. Paulo and his sister, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, both moved to ensure that the term-sharing deal between Cayetano and Velasco, which was brokered by their father, the president, will push through. Environment Undersecretary Benny Antiporida criticizes experts from University of the Philippines after they offered their counsel on the controversial Manila Baywalk White Sand project. He says the offer will just be paid for again by the government and claims the state university should render its services free because it is funded by the government. Antiporda says his agency paid half a billion pesos to UP experts over various consultations since 2016. But UP Marine Science Institute Director Laura David clarifies the Environment Department only spent some 360 million pesos in their projects with MSI over the last 10 years. Antiporda also defends the project from the scientists. He says Wednesday, October 14, Hindi nyo karapatan batikusin ito dahil bayaran kayo. Yun lang po ang masasabi ko sa UP. Ulit-ulitin ko, bayaran kayo. You have no right to criticize because you were paid. That's the only thing I can say about UP. I will repeat. You were paid. The UP Institute of Biology recently released a statement critical of the artificial placement of crushed dolomite along Manila Bay Walk. Meantime, presidential spokesperson Hari Roque calls on their OCTA research group to desist from making public their recommendations on quarantine classifications. OCTA group is composed of experts from top academic institutions. They can probably endorse or course their recommendations privately to the IATF na hindi naman po napapangunahan, highlighting the fact that classifications are normally announced no less than the president himself. Political science professor and member of the OCTA research, Ranjit Rai, says the team will ensure its findings and recommendations will be accessible to the public and the government. The research group's reports provided the public with invaluable analysis of pandemic statistics. 
They are among Filipinos' few sources of information on the pandemic outside the Duterte government's own communications and propaganda arm. Apple unveils a new iPhone 12 line highlighting key improvements such as the enhanced toughness and its 5G capabilities Wednesday, October 14, Manila time. In a virtual launch, Apple introduces the iPhone 12 mini, which they call the smallest, thinnest, and lightest 5G smartphone in the world. The iPhone mini sports a 5.4-inch display while the base iPhone 12 has a 6.1-inch screen. A new ceramic shield front cover protects the iPhone 12 screen and is said to have four times tougher drop performance than previous iPhones. Both units have an aluminum finish and will come in black, white, product red, green, and blue. The iPhone 12 also has a cutting-edge feature for cinema-style color grading in videos. Meantime, the higher-end iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max models now have LiDAR or the light detection and ranging technology. This gives a better augmented reality experience, object scanning, and camera improvements. Like the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, the new higher-end iPhone 12 models will have a triple camera setup. Camera improvements for iPhone 12 Pro include a wide camera with a larger aperture and a telephoto with 4 times optical zoom range. The 12 Pro Max is an upgraded version with a larger sensor and a telephoto lens with a 5 times optical zoom range. Both the new Pro and Pro Max have a glossy stainless steel finish in the colors graphite, silver, gold, and the new Pacific blue. Actress Liza Soberano turns emotional as she calls on women and influencers to use their voice and speak on issues involving women and children. And as a woman, as a Filipino artist, um, I think that women, women and influencers alike should start speaking up and they can contribute not only awareness about these issues, but also encouragement and confidence to our fellow women and children that they need to learn to stand up for themselves. The young actress is speaking at an event of Gabriela Youth for the International Day of the Girl Child on Tuesday, October 13. Soberano admits, in the past she was not as vocal on issues because she was afraid she would divide her supporters. But it changed when she filed a complaint against an online user for a rape joke against her last month. She says she became emotional after receiving messages from her supporters, thanking her for fighting back. The actress also says she looks up to other celebrities like Angel Oxin, who is vocal about causes she supports. Whenever they speak up, it gives me, it empowers me, and it gives me the courage to start speaking up about these issues too, because they matter and we need to start seeing change in the world. 